happened? We go to Indianapolis, just fresh off the plane. Clark Judge, CBSSports.com, senior NFL columnist. He is in Indianapolis, arriving safe and sound. Right off the bat, this Darrell Rivas story being traded and how he's handled himself with the trade rumors, this has got to be a big front-burner topic at Indy, right? Yeah, I would think so. Um, although, you know, Brad, I know we've talked about this before. My question is, how's anyone going to know about Darrell Rebus until he actually works out for somebody? He's coming off a major injury, which is a knee injury. He's going to ask for a lot of money. So how do you know what you're getting until he actually works out? He's not going to be ready to do that until, I think, April at the earliest. So um, there are going to be trade talks, and there are going to be people talking about him. But um, I don't know that that's going to be the primary issue. I would think Flacco probably is going to be a bigger topic. In Fla- and Alan Rebus, don't get over to Flacco. In Rebus's case, I've already heard Tampa Bay – I've heard the 49ers with Alex Smith, and that's just right. reaching, maybe, maybe not. And even the Pittsburgh Steelers is kind of a dark horse who never go this route, but know they need help on that end. Are you hearing some of the same stuff? Yeah, I mean, the 49ers I heard as early as the Super Bowl, simply because they said at some point they're going to have to replace Carlos Rogers. He seems to be at the end of the line, um, would be a, a natural fit for them if they got rid of Alex Smith. One way or the other, they clear the cap space to take on someone like a Darrell Rebus. But um, that's conjecture at this point. And, and certainly if you're talking about Rebus, he's going to command a lot in, in, a, in a trade. But, again, it's going to be tempered by um, that knee injury because uh, you, you're, you're not getting uh, a guy who's completely healthy. There are people who are wondering what you are getting. I mean, if you're getting a healthy player, you're getting one of the best, if not the best, cornerbacks in the business. But – comes with a high price tag, and again, as I said, coming off a serious injury. Well, in the Andrea Kramer interview earlier this week, really raised my eyebrows about Darrell Rivas. Like, I don't believe an NFL team has to call a player and say that you're going to be shopped around. Do you? Right. No. Yeah. And, no. and so, yeah, you've had a great career, but guess what? I'm going to use the Charles Barkley term, who turns 50 today here in the Valley. You are a piece of meat. That is right. the way it works in any professional sport. Yeah, no, that's right. And this is a business, and this is just a, an affirmation of that. If you didn't understand it before, he certainly does now. I think it's probably um, it, it's disappointment to him because if there was anyone who talked up this guy in the past, Brad, it was his head coach. I mean, Rex Ryan has said again and again, there's no one better in this business. There's not a better defensive player in this business than mm-hmm. Darrell Rebus. And so he's talked him up over and over again. And so now he's a member and certainly the, the point man in the organization that's now shopping him around. Well, how come I didn't hear from him? Because he's the guy who thinks I'm so valuable. Now he thinks they ought to trade me. Well, I, I think all they're doing is exploring their options. They're doing what anyone else would do. And, and you're absolutely right. They do not owe it to the player. Now, if they did it, yeah, great. If they don't, that's business. That's the way it's done in a lot of places. And unfortunately, that's the way it's being done with the uh, the New York Jets right now, at least unfortunately from Darrell Reeves' point of view. Clark Judge with us for a couple of minutes from the Combine. Before I get to Flacco, is there any chance, any scenario of what you're hearing very early on here in the offseason of Alex Smith being able to make his way from the 49ers to Arizona? Uh, I have not heard that, no. I mean, is there any scenario? Sure, there's a scenario. I mean, if, if you want to, if you're going to trade him, but again, I, Here's the, here's the problem, Brad. I mean, if you're going to trade him, why would you trade him within the division? No, that's right. Against, that's right. Right. I'm always against that. And I, there's some people, Andy Reid's one of them, who believe, hey, I don't care where I send him. I'm going to send him where I get the best deal. Andy Reid sent Donovan McNabb to a division opponent. Didn't care. He let uh, Terrell Owens walk to a division opponent. Didn't care. So I don't know what the 49ers thinking is on this. I think they'd be reluctant to do that because they'd have to play him twice a year. So in answer to your question, no. But, I mean, could it happen? Yeah, I guess it's possible, but I haven't heard it. Okay, let's get into the Flacco situation. This, at at Super Bowl time, seemed like a no-brainer that he is going to be back with his team. Is it still a no-brainer that he's going to be back with his team? Absolutely. I mean, there's no way he's not going to be playing for the Baltimore Ravens next year. This is a team that makes smart decisions. They know their personnel. There's an expression around the NFL, people who know their own team. They're people who know what their players look like. They go out and get players who fit their club, and, and they just have a feel for that kind of guy. Pittsburgh's one of those teams. Baltimore's another one of them. They draft very well. They keep the players who are valuable to them. And I, honestly, I'd say to you, tell me a player that Baltimore let go who is consequential somewhere else. It really hasn't happened. Um, so you look at Flacco, he's indispensable to them. Right. They know that. The question is, at what value? At what price? That's what they've got to figure out right now. And the reason that's a big deal here is because if they can do it before they have to franchise him, in other words, if they can sign him to a long-term deal, it's going to have implications for other free agents with that club or clubs or, or players who might have to undergo restructures, a guy like Anquan Bolden or a free agent 
like um, uh, uh, Danelle Mc, um, uh, Ellerby, the, the linebacker, or Paul Kruger, linebacker. Paul, yeah, Paul Kruger, also, yeah. Ed Reed's a free agent, too. What are you going to do with those guys? So the, the Flacco conversation starts that whole process. That's why it's important, but don't kid yourself. He's not playing for anyone else for the next five or six, seven no, years no, no. That, in Baltimore. And I understand that. It's just it's the whole financials and how it works out. I, agree, I understand. And yeah. there are people in Cleveland who are saying, could he end up a Cleveland Brown? Come on. I mean, get real. He's going to be playing for Baltimore. Come on. Speaking of Cleveland, so we've heard Alex Smith's name attached to Cleveland. That they've yeah, already given right. up on Brandon Whedon. Are you hearing the same thing out of Cleveland? I don't know if they've already given up on Brandon Whedon, but they certainly don't have the allegiance to them that the prior administration did for good reason. They didn't draft him. Um, so uh, you look at what's there now, and North Turner's there. And he's an offensive coordinator who's had experience with Alex Smith in San Francisco. In fact, in Alex Smith's second year, North Turner got a lot out of him. And I thought at that point he actually began to look like a quarterback. I thought he regressed after Norv left. Uh, North Turner and Cleveland, I think Alex Smith would be a perfect guy to come in there and challenge and, and push a guy like Whedon. But I think Alex Smith would win that job. So I think Cleveland's a major player here, and they think should be. Dwight Freeney's name is all over the place. Roddy yeah. White this afternoon sent out a tweet wanting to have Dwight Freeney as a Falcon. I mean, right. lo everybody's lobbying for Dwight Freeney. What do you hear on that front today? Well, yeah, you're right. There are a lot of people. I mean, obviously, Peyton Manning's trying to get him to uh, Denver. The Giants are talking about him. To me, it makes sense to get him. Uh, in an indoor stadium, to be honest with you. I mean, he fit a, 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 a defense here that was small, fast, and, and really suited uh, his talents. And he was drafted for a reason. He was an undersized defensive end who was quick and fast and suited Tony Dungy's defense. Well, outdoors, I, I know, you know, people, maybe your list is going to stop at this, but there, there is a difference in, in, in playing outside than there is in playing on these, some of these indoor tracks. And so mm -hmm. I think that Dwight Freeney goes, hey, listen, at, at Atlanta, I probably have a better chance in Atlanta uh, it's a team that, that's close to the top than I do in, say, Denver, for instance. So um, I, I think he's got a, a, a shot at being with a team that's close to the top, Denver and Atlanta are two of them. The Giants, I don't know that that's going to happen there. I mean, they, they just, they're just going to let you and Yura go. This is an aging defensive end. I don't know that you get anything more out of Dwight Freeney than you get out of O.T. and Yura, and Dwight Freeney's older. So um, I would say that, that, you know, Atlanta's probably, to me, the lead dog at this point. But... I wouldn't. I would not underestimate Peyton Manning's power of pers persuasion. Yeah, Clark Judge with us from the Scouting Combine, CBS Sports uh, senior NFL columnist, CBSSports.com. Have you seen the RG3 commercial that came out this week? I, yeah. I have not. No. Okay, so it's it's a commercial where he says all in one for Week One, which mm -hmm. is suggesting that he's going to be out there on the field and playing. Then he sends out a tweet yesterday, and, and you know his marketing people and his business people. I guess, what are you hearing around RG3 being available for week one? Because when I saw this, it's who in their right mind would have him look into a camera and say, all in for week one? Yeah, well, I, I think it's all, like you mentioned, marketing. Uh, it's all about making money and, and saying, you know, this is what I hope to do. Certainly that's not the message that's conveyed there. No, no. But um, I thought his tweet was absolutely right on. I mean, listen, you don't do anything to compromise your career. If he's not ready for week six, it's okay with me. I, I mean, you look at the long term here, and that's what I think Mike Shanahan and the Washington Redskins lost sight of during the playoffs. I mean, it was one game, and they played the guy when he, clearly he was – uh, handicap. So, um, and I think what he suffered the consequences. He suffered the consequences. So, I think he's got to be careful here. Honestly, what he tweeted out to me was much closer to what should be the thinking here. Take your time. Get back when you're ready. Don't, don't hurry yourself. Because remember when uh, Mike Shannon first talked about this injury, he mentioned Adrian Peterson. Well, there's no guarantee this is Adrian Peterson. That was a miracle recovery, and it happened much sooner than anyone anticipated. With the results, much better and far excessive than anyone ever anticipated. So the comparisons aren't apt, and each guy is different. So let this guy go his own pace, and when he's ready to come back, let him come back. Are you one of those guys at the Combine that wants to visit with the, the head coach, or would you rather visit with the team capologist and the scout? Uh, uh, yeah, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, I, I probably would rather visit with the... Um, the assistant well, general manager? Visit, yeah, yeah, because he's going to send you in the direction of where the team's going. Right. And then basically he tells the team capologist, this is what I want, this is what I don't want, what can we do here? But um, I, I know it's a – and that's a tough question. That's a good question, Brad, because the capologist basically is saying, listen, here's what we can maneuver here, what's, here's what we can do. But the GM has an idea of these are the indispensable players. I mean, we go back to Baltimore, guarantee you, Ozzie Newsom saying, okay, we start first with Joe Flacco. All right, we have him. Now what can we do? 
under this scenario? What can we do under that scenario? But um, probably the GM and the coach, those are my greatest interests. And then you work your way down. Scouts are in there. I love talking to scouts and capologists. But basically here, what you can get, you can get coaches and GMs, but you can get coaches all over the board. I mean, receivers, coaches, running backs, coaches. Of course, you don't care about running backs who, who can catch passes in Arizona. But sure. you care about um, the, all the assistants. And, you know, you want to meet with the, the coaches. So uh, I think that's more my interest. Uh, the overriding theme of this combine, and, and it seems like all the combines, is mm -hmm. quarterbacks. Quarterbacks right. will get most of the attention. Right. Uh, are you getting that sense this year because the the biggest name, Matt Barkley, is not going to throw? Geno Smith right. is a huge name, too. Right. Um, is, is this Christian Ponder and Blaine Gabbert playing itself out again? Yeah, it's not even that, Brad, I don't think. Um, honestly, I, I talked to somebody about three weeks ago about the quality of this class, and I don't know it that well, and that's one reason I'm here. Sure. And this sort of starts, you know, you're, you're going through this, and I said, tell me, how good are these guys? Is there a top five pick here? And he goes, no. I said, a top ten? No. Fifteen? Uh-uh. And I said, what are we looking at here? He goes, you may not be looking at a first-round caliber quarterback. And I said, you kidding me? He goes, no. He said, that doesn't mean there won't be one taken. There'll probably be several taken because people are always jumping. As you mentioned, Jake Locker, eighth pick in the draft. Christian Ponder, 12th pick in the draft. So you look at these guys and say, Geno Smith, is he the best quarterback out there? And some people have Kansas City taking him for the first pick. That's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen for a good reason. He's not the best player in this draft, nor is he close to it. But I think it's interesting to see how this thing plays itself out. Can somebody play themselves into the first round here? I mean, when we came here a couple of years ago, Kaepernick was a guy I was intrigued by. But I thought he was a third-round draft pick. Turns out he was a high second because San Francisco identified him. But there's going to be somebody like that here. Maybe it's a Matt Barkley, although he's not going to throw. Maybe it's a Geno Smith. You never know. Maybe it's a Tyler Bray. But you just don't know Tyler Wilson. I mean, I looked at a guy like Landry Jones. Why did he fall down his last two years at Oklahoma? I don't know. I want to find out. Quarterbacks are the subject of discussion, but not as they were in the past because there's not a guy here who's a top 10 or top 15 pick. Yeah. I had Jake Plummer. I got to let you go off this, but I had Jake Plummer on yesterday. He's been mentoring and working with Colin Klein day after day. Right. And, right. and there's another guy that I think could rise here at the, at the, uh, at the I agree. I'll let I you agree. And I'm glad you mentioned Jake Plummer because he's one of my favorite quarterbacks. And honestly, a guy who left at the top of his game and I had enormous respect for and the Broncos let him go because they thought they had somebody better than Jay Cutler. They didn't. They should have stayed with Plummer. See you soon. Stay well. Thanks. Thanks, Brad.